Well, welcome back. Glad to see you. My name's Sean. Uh, my son Levi is helping me out on this project, and we do uh, solar systems on RVs. And uh, we do a lot of different things on a lot of different RVs. So if you want to see how this one works out, I really recommend you keep watching. Uh, we're going to be putting as much solar as we can on a rack on this Winnebago view. And we've already put in two 300 amp hour Epic lithium batteries. And if that wasn't enough, we found room for one 460. So do the math on that. I think that's 1,600 amp hour. Wow, that is crazy. Um, so the batteries are in. We're not touching the inverter. The inverter is a Xantrax, uh, I think 2000 Freedom XC. So that means it's an inverter and a charger. That's what the C part means on there. And uh, yeah, we also are doing something on the DC-DC charging system, which is a little unorthodox, but uh, we get the request a lot, and this is our solution on how we figure it out. So uh, let's dive into that, and then I'll also show you the battery system, and uh, then we're gonna get to the solar. So stick around. Good to see you. First off here, there's Levi. He's uh, been hard at work. He, he removed the seat. Yeah. Why'd you do that? We gotta put solenoids in there. That's right, that's right. DC charger out. Oh, yep. Careful now. Yep, yep. Uh, so, uh, JD, if uh, fans of the channel will know, we got another guy who helps us out too. He did all this work. Uh, we pulled out two of the uh, Battleborn or Dragonfly batteries that were in here. I don't know if that was from the factory or a customer upgrade, but we got those out of there going from 200 amp hour to 600 amp hour, same space. Uh, we didn't even have to cut anything here. Now, we did have to pretty much pull all this stuff off to get the batteries in, I believe anyway. Um, so that was a little bit tricky, but then we took it one step further. Customer said, I need more. And we said, okay. So we put another battery here. We have not secured it yet or anything like that because we're still trying to figure out where we're gonna put the solar controller for how much solar we're adding. Now let's get to uh, the DC-DC charging portion of it. Uh, I did rework this solution a little bit since we first started. Uh, again, there used to be the Orion 121230 in here, and that's a great charger, but it's Achilles heel, like I said before, or if I, in other videos, um, it only goes one way. So what we did was we kind of rolled our own here. Uh, we've got a 100 amp thermal breaker here. So the energy comes from the engine battery to the thermal breaker. So that protects it so that we're never going to really take much over 100 amps uh, consistently from the alternator. And this is a 200 amp alternator. Uh, 200 to 220, I think, is what it is. And then we've got these Orion CTs. And I ended up adding a second one. We've done one plenty of times, but I added a second one because it was getting, one of these was getting warmer than I'd like. And it's just got these small kind of quarter inch terminals on there. And while it says it's good for 120 amps, uh, do not run 120 through them consistently. They do protect themselves. They turn off and on. I was just getting temperatures that were way too warm on these. So we added a second one and now the temperatures stay plenty good and uh they do i can tell they're a little bit warm right now that's because um they're actually charging the start battery system right now from solar and everything else and that's the thing that's really nice about this they charge two-way so it'll keep your start battery system charged and it'll allow 100 amps into your battery uh customers saying this was just taken forever and you could do 50 amp uh, Orion XSs or even two of those. We've done that before. Uh, but this is a kind of a nice, simple, elegant solution. And that's what we're gonna roll with. Would you quit making, would you quit making so much noise? I try. <laughs> All right, so we're up on the roof, getting it done here and you can see how we're gonna put one 200 watt panel here and boy, just let me tell you, look at this. Look at how perfect that fits on this rail system. That is, well, that, that's just a thing of beauty. 
and I'm pretty sure the other one's gonna fit on the other side. So we got that going on there. Then we're extending the rail all the way over here and we're gonna put two of these bad boys here, these 550 watt panels on this side. And my measuring stick says they'll fit. They're just pretty much gonna go right to the end and uh, the customer's got a star link they wanna put there. So that is gonna stay. Uh, we talked about you're pretty much not gonna have access to the roof anymore. Well, look, the rail system goes right over the, uh, uh, whatever that, the, what's that called? Ladder. Ladder? Yep. Or I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, it does. We're good. All right. Oh. Can you believe it's 85 in October right now? Mm -mm. No. All right. We're going to get back at this. See if we can't get this up and done today. Oh, watch out. He's feeling it. All right. As you can tell, we've got the rails up and I've got some panels that are already starting to be put down. Uh, these are secure, ready to go. We can wire them up over there. We are going to be doing these in series right over here, which isn't great, but that's because, again, we're going to try and fit two uh, 550 watt panels over here that are going to be in series so they have to match the voltages these are the uh, 24 volt as uh, rich solar likes to say and which confuses you even more if you're trying to do this at home uh, that runs actually at about a 45 volts or so <laughs> so uh, go figure but uh, that's what we're trying to do that's what the big uh, those big giant panels they typically run 45 to 50 volts so that'll be a good match for these uh, anyway I'm gonna take a look at how these are mounted, the rails. And I did modify these flash lock feet to support three fasteners. It's kind of hard to tell. Well, there you can see them a little bit. So I got three fasteners into each foot. I did hit the ribbing on some of them, but not all of them. But uh, I like to think that many hands make light work, or in this case, many fasteners make for stuff that doesn't hopefully fly off. But uh, the thing I wanna talk about here is I don't think, uh, how can anything fly off? Look at this, this is streamlined here. It's pretty much at the same level. I was talking with the customer a little bit. He was worried about like, ah, you think it's gonna, you know, change aerodynamics much? And I was like, yeah, for the better. <laughs> this whole roof is gonna get clean. It's gonna be one clean thing other than there's gonna be a little gap here, but back here, it's gonna be completely smooth. Uh, this is gonna be pretty sweet. And then uh, at the end there, we're gonna cut those off. Uh, my thought on that is, I'm not going to be able to, or I don't want to risk cutting it short and because I don't have a rail stretcher. Maybe some of you carpenters have board stretchers. I do not have a rail stretcher. Uh, so I'm going to put it on first and then cut it to length. Perfect. Here it is all done. Got the ends trimmed. So that's in good shape now. And it's pickup morning, sun's over there. All right, we're all about transparency here. We don't always do things perfect. I make mistakes. I made a mistake here. Uh, and I realized it while I was testing the solar because uh, it's getting, finally getting sunny out. And um, I was like, there's no power coming in to the battery monitor here on the wall, but I am seeing it on the app. And the reason is, I connected the uh, solar charger directly to the battery negative there. So the batteries are aware of the power coming in, but the shunt isn't. So I need to make sure my negative comes to this uh, negative ground stud here. So I've already got a two gauge wire run for that. And now I just gotta swap that out over here. So if you're ever in a situation where your battery monitor isn't uh, as predictable as it should be. It's not showing the right current, the right uh, whatever, really. Uh, make sure all your grounds are uh, on the battery minus side of the shunt, not on the battery. It's really easy, really convenient. My brain just turned off. I was like, oh, this is gonna be easy. I'll just connect it right to the battery. Easy peasy. <sighs> Decisions have consequences, right? All right, got that connected in. Got it connected there, still gotta take care of that negative there. But uh, yeah, now we got 12 amps coming in through the shunt and that's about what we're getting on the solar charger. But uh, yeah, oh, look at that sun, it looks pretty. 
just wish there was a little less clouds because then the solar would work a little bit better, but here's what it is. Look at that. I think that looks ready to go, ready for adventure. Got that all cleaned up, got the sticker on, so I think we're about done here. Got that buttoned up, got the seat back on, the old charger there. Customer can maybe pass that on to somebody else or use it for something else. We're all done now. Hey, there's Mr. Bear. He made an appearance. Uh, but yeah, it's all done. We got it out in the back lot. Customer's gonna pick it up here later and uh, the clouds are definitely rolling in. But one of the things I wanted to talk about was, can you even tell? Can you even tell that there's 1500 watts of solar up there? I can't, not from this side. Let's do a quick walk around just so everybody can see. It is not obnoxious, intrusive, anything like that. You do see a little bit of rail sticking out. Now on this side, definitely you see a little bit, maybe a lot of bit. <laughs> But uh, most people I find tend to care about campsite a lot more than uh, utility side. And that's the beauty with that awning. So you can take a look there. You really can't see much of it at all. I mean, again, on this side. Well, I think that'll do it for this one. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, check out our website, sotasolar.com. S-O-T-A, S-O-L-A-R.com. That's short for Minnesota, but you can say it's short for whatever you want. I don't care. Um, and again, from all of us, myself, Sean, my son, Levi, uh, JD, who is heading out to Quartzsite. Hey, whoa, 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 what's up, bud? Oh, Bear, Bear wanted to show you his stick. And from Bear, of course, you us. All right, I got some work to do over here, so I'll see you next time. Bye. Ow.